Series number two, game number one. Meta Madness continues. The next match in the group stage. Yeah, Team Lava was able to win the first series against Team X-Ray, so now they have a good shot. If they are actually also successful against Nick, they take the top spot in Group A, which would be pretty fantastic for them, so that would be kind of nice. True the Spider Queen is our first map. And again, rules are reset. So we're heading into this series, a best of three, as I already mentioned, with six heroes that are globally banned. Keep in mind, guys, the number of banned heroes can actually be increased uh, to tomorrow. So that is likely going to happen. The heroes that are banned are still Deathwing, Anna, Zul, Liming, Johanna, and Abatha. But every single hero that is now played in map, on map 1 is also automatically banned for map number 2. If a hero is played on map number 2 and we go to a third map, then the heroes that have been played in game number 1 and game number 2 are both banned for that last and final map. So you've already seen a few adjustments being made in the previous series where we had a 2-0 victory, but just imagine if this would have actually gone to the third map. Now today is a little bit of a warm-up phase. Today is actually something where we test the waters and tomorrow is where the real deal happens, where we have best of five matches coming up, which will of course spice things up a lot, especially if we're going into a fifth map. I hopefully have for everybody watching this on YouTube included all the information with links in the uh, in the description of the video. So if you watch this on YouTube right now, make sure that you give the video also a thumbs up. And also a special shout out, first of all, to Hightech, our partner here, and also for all supporters, not only on Twitch, but also on uh, Patreon. Thank you very much, and without all of you guys, stuff like this wouldn't be possible. So, my F and ETC banned out. We got a ban on Jimmy. And, well, last ban coming in before we have our first few picks. That will, of course, then be the heroes that are banned in the next one, but yeah. So, first of all, Tacita, <laughs> now that he was buffed in the last patch, uh, a lot of the teams are actually saying, you know what, uh, yeah, we don't really like him too much. So, Rega gets picked, brings, of course, that wave clear to Tomb of the Spider Queen. It's going to be really interesting to see how teams are now starting to pick heroes depending on the map, and it's like, do we save a hero for the next map? Are we guaranteed to get that hero? Do we actually think about that at all? Meta Madness comes in with his very own meta at this point, so yeah, that's that. But what do we have for Team Nick? Where's the German efficiency that we need? Junkrat is taken, Dino gets the pick, and Garrosh gets locked in too. Uh, Junkrat was actually banned out in the previous series a few times. Team X-Ray banned it out, if I'm not mistaken. And ah, for Tomb. I, again, this is another one of these maps, you know, where you would usually pick Johanna. Johanna would be a great pick here, but she is globally banned. Azul, another one. So you, like, to a lot of people when they look at these drafts right now for the first series and in this best of three setup, they look at this and it's like, well, it's still normal drafts. And to an extent, that's true, but there's already deviations that happen just because six heroes are eliminated from the get-go. And the normal ban pattern where you have to ban out Zul, for example, where you're worried about the first pick or an early pick on Johanna for the added wave clear to the Spider Queen is all of a sudden out of the window. And those small adjustments, even in the first map, they already matter because it means that you have to set up your rotation a little bit differently differently and that you have to set all of this up in a completely different way when it comes to the team fighting and the objective. So it's pretty cool to see that. There will also be certain heroes that of course have a slight advantage because others are banned out. So it's actually pretty cool to see that already coming in. And if you're watching a lot of Heroes of the Storm right now, those subtle differences will be something that you notice. But believe me, once that we're heading into a third, fourth, fifth map, those differences won't be that subtle anymore. So yeah. But the big question is still, can Team Lauber actually win another series here? That's the big one for now. So Carrigan is already locked in uh, as well as another ban. That doesn't come as a shock. Nick obviously fantastic on uh, Carrigan in particular. It was actually this map where he brought it back, which was kind of fun. So uh, we'll see if he can now deliver on another hero here. I'm still waiting for... Uh, okay, Deckard Kane is coming out. I'm still waiting for a few of the reworked heroes. Cassia, Tracer, for example, just a few. But, yeah, let's see what we're actually gonna see there. Uh, right. I shall suffer! Okay. Mm. 
<laughs> the hesitation over there. It's map one, boys. If it takes that long to draft, then something is wrong. What are you going to do on map three? Okay. Muradin and Sylvanas. Okay. The dwarf is in. Muradin, Stormball into Greymane, Bullet, maybe. Sylvanas for the push now as well. Yeah, this is going to be fun. All right. Last pick. Let's check that out. <laughs> oh, I'm kind of happy for this one. Actually, Muradin is a hero that I kind of miss a little bit. I mean, he gets played every now and then, but I, I kind of think that Muradin's setups are great. And there we go, Tracer! The new Tracer is in, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to have a closer look at the build that is being used for this map, but we are ready. Game number one in the best of three series here between Team Lauba and Team Nick. Game on! Team Nick against Team Lauba on Tomb of the Spider Queen here at Meta Madness, powered by High Tech. Nick on Leoric, we have Dino on Tracer, the reworked Tracer with Kelvin on Junkrat, Masquerade and Garrosh, and Yazu on Deckard Kane. On the right side of the map, as Lauba is already pausing the game, having apparently a little bit of a 3 2 3 moment over here, so yeah, that anxiety is kicking in. He already won a best of three series, and after the in-house tournament, he's not used to that anymore. Winning comes with a heavy burden, and he seems to be in a bit of trouble here, at least this team. Nah, just kidding. So let's go over this real quickly. Tie on Rega for Team Lava. That in and of itself is already funny to me. Having tie on a support is kind of awesome and weird at the same time, so that's pretty cool. We got Lauba on Muradin, Svamgorota on Greymane, Ruzo on Sylvanas, and Death Knight is playing Rexa. And when it comes to the talents, we already have the parting gift taken here on level 1. So that actually got moved from level 4. I mean, we had a full rework on Tracer pretty much. So it's something to keep in mind. We're going to go over the build and also the impact that Tracer is going to have in this game. So we're going to check that out. But off we go. Deckard Kane, the old man, I like it. Having him a bit more often now on this map is of course cool as well. There are a few supports banned out already in uh, the series here. Anna, for example, can't be played at all. What is Banana going to do? That's the bigger question, you know? But in this case, we now have also the Perfect Storm already set up as a level 1 talent. So Muradin is going to stack a little bit more heavily here. Masquerade doesn't have his Indomitable yet, so he needs to be careful with this. Leo, fantastic combo by the way. The Doubloon, always a good hero. Yes, it's about the money pick, I know, I know. But if you go for an alternative mount, then the Doubloon is always a win. I mean, again, you can't really go wrong with the Doubloon, right? That's just what it is. So now that we're seeing the jump coming in, we have Masquerade up at the top, rotating with the rest of his team, and Lauba and his boys are doing the exact same thing in the... Oh my god, Lauba actually gets pushed out. Can they get the kill? No, Stormball connects, and Dino has to zip away. Masquerade is also a bit low. Seems to be hunting season on tanks at this point. Both of them have already been dropped pretty heavily here. And with that, I don't mean on the head. But yeah, we'll check that out. Okay, so... What else are we going to get for Tracer? That's a bigger question right now. There's a couple of talents that have been removed. Slipstream has been removed. Pulse Strike has been removed, for example. Uh, Leeching Rounds in level 7. There's actually a couple. I mean, it's a full rework. You have a couple of new abilities in here and new talents, but we're going to keep a close eye on how exactly Dino plays that out. And if Tracer, I'm pretty sure we're going to see a bit more in this tournament. Especially uh, when we look at best of fives, so highly likely that we can compare build, compare builds a little bit if they actually differ at all. Nick is in this case on Leo, and he's already being pushed out. It's kind of fun to see, just generally speaking, like people switch roles again, right? Ty all of a sudden on Rega. You have Nick on the side laner. Those are all things that are kind of funny because it is a setup where you have sometimes to pick niche heroes. Now we're not there yet on map one, but it will get to that point later on and the cool part about it at this point is simply that those those draft teams that we had with the captains drafting their players just demand that from you it's just something that you have to to live with so the pulse generator on level four is coming in as well that's actually a new talent that comes in here so it's a little bit of a heal and blink so just sustain in general is something that you get through that and obviously helps you out it's super important if you want to make those aggressive plays and Dino is taking advantage of that immediately hunter gatherer on level four for rexa so we got a little bit of stacking talents now for them as well 
Cassia, most likely going to be played later on too. Interestingly enough, by the way, on level 4 we have now the Reverberation taken for uh, Lauba as he throws out that Nomi Stormbolt and zones Tracer a little bit. So, not going for that healing static combo with level 4 that allows you with the second proc to have a bit more survivability. And instead we now have Leo also at the bottom of the mat. Neil Peasants is coming in with that very, very quickly. Dino still jumping in and jumping out here. Yeah, gotta be careful with that. It's kind of cool actually to see so many players on that team that could play Tracer. I mean, Nick of course is also known for his Tracer shenanigans. But Dino always on the active ones. Dropping the Pulse Bomb immediately, trying to get some extra damage in. The Sylvanas factor should not be underestimated. If you get a Webby Wave going for yourself and then Sylvanas comes in and helps out, that's pretty fantastic. And as you can tell, they are already starting to make the move for the turn-in. We're looking at 31's, uh, 31 gems that got already committed here, so that's great. Yeah, of course the attack. Tie! And he's down. Body blocked and eliminated. Masquerade barely makes it out. The problem is that Lauer might actually still fall in the part and Gift takes him apart. That's a double kill. Well played. And they're looking for more. They're trying for it, so they can't get him. But instead, they're focusing on Swamp Grotter. That's 12 gems. Oh, and they lose every single one of them. 12 gems down. Yeah. Still enough gems in their hands, so it's not like they just lost the game here, but especially in the early game, when you want to gain that momentum, losing the gems is problematic. And of course it gives a lot of map control to the blue team in the first place, which allows them to now go for a turn in themselves. And I would be very surprised if they are passing up on that chance. Now it's a 5 versus 5 on the map again. Misha and Rexa are doing their best at the bottom to prevent at least Leo from uh, getting the turn in over here though. Still a bit of an attempt at another fight. The other seven talents are in for both teams by now. Tracer heading straight into the locked and loaded now on level seven. Alrighty. Yeah, locked and loaded got actually moved. So it got moved from the level 16. So again, big changes on her. Now the red team is still the one to lock in first. It's kind of funny actually. I mean, if you think about it, it's three kills against zero, but the red team, I think that's slide for now. Let's have a quick look of... Can they get the... Oh, that would be fantastic. If they could have taken Mirrodin down here. Boy, that would have been great. Just imagine level 10 ability on the side of Garrosh already. That taunt after the flip and stun would have taken Mirrodin out for sure. And that would have been the end of that approach. So thankfully for them, it didn't come to that. But ooh, that got dangerous very quickly. Well, as it stands... We still have the attack with the Web Weavers in the middle, up at the top. Leo and Rexa still at the bottom of the map doing their thing right now. But over here, that is where Sylvanas is currently trying to push. And gets zoned out already fairly quickly. And I mean, that's exactly what you gotta do. You gotta push this out a little bit. So they're currently trying. Down here at the same time now, we have Nick and he is all alone. So he can't do a lot, especially with 29 gems in your hands. I mean, what are you gonna do? You can't YOLO into this. So they are just trying to play that out with the rotation from the top. Level 10 abilities are in quicker for the blue team. So that allows them to even force the fight here. And that could actually land them a kill or two. There's the Entomb. Lauba ah, jumps out. But look at Yasu. Immediately with a sleeve. Oh, the rip tire. Stay a while and get wrecked, baby. Muradin is down. Rex are barely surviving. But oh my god. Talking about Muradin, by the way, that's eight Storm Balls that he connected from the beginning of this game onwards. Four kills against zero now, but what a setup. Yeah, over here, Greyman with the bullet now, Muradin. Talons on 10, as you would expect. No big deal over here. The Quantum Spike still is, of course, fantastic against Muradin for sure. But here comes the turn in. Camps are now taken on both sides, so the Bruiser Camp has actually been claimed. By <laughs> yeah, boys. Uh, that kind of backfired a little bit. Oh, they're gonna get those seed shines, aren't they? Well, it's a big fight. Sylvanas isn't here yet. Web Weavers are coming down slowly, but it seems like the seed shines are still taken by Team Lauba. Okay, kudos. I didn't really think they could pull that one off, but indeed they do. So nicely done. 
Four kills against zero still. Rhaegar, as usual these days, going for Bloodlust. If you haven't seen that yet, it might come as a bit of a surprise. But yes, Ancestral Healing lost out uh, against Bloodlust lately because Bloodlust was actually buffed. Not in the recent patch, in the one before. But that's something to definitely keep your eyes on if you haven't seen it yet. It's one of the reasons why you actually get a lot of Greymane together with Rhaegar. Oftentimes you get Tyrael together with that combo too. Now for Meta Madness, that is only going to have so much of an impact since I expect a lot of those heroes banned out or played very quickly and then never again. But it could happen. Muradin, Lauba in trouble. Fantastic jungle play here to control him. The displacement was great and now they go for a follow-up kill against Greymane. Team Nick, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god. I mean, he escapes. At least it seems he will. But Nick is coming in with his team and all that German efficiency. And he is just murdering. That bad boy is out for, for, uh, out for blood at this point. And is doing incredibly well here. Taking the top four down. That was already a big step. Having the one in the middle severely damaged. Five kills against zero so far. It's pretty much a flawless game. And on top of that, they're also looking at another turn in right now. And potential level 13 talent advantage. Trace over 25,000 damage. Yeah, Dino looking good here. Even eclipsing the damage output of Junkrat a bit. You still at the bottom of the map. Turn in attempt by Tai. They have... Well, they have the gems. They just need to deliver them. But here's the level 13 talent. And that's always a problem when you, when you file behind in talents. Okay, there's the attack. The entomb already over the wall. Nicely done. Nick with a good entomb, but that just pretty much puts Death Knight out of the fight. But it doesn't really do too much for them here. The main threat is Misha anyways. This, on the other hand, is a different story. There's the Boar's Unleash. Deckard Kane comes in once more. Yeah, but here comes Swam Grotta. The counter kill against Tyre as Rhaegar falls, but Junkrat has been eliminated. Six versus one kill, and it is time to shine, baby. Oh yeah, they are going for it, aren't they? Here comes the level 13, Untouchable. A little bit of a different one now. And also the passive was, of course, great. If you have the increased blink range, that is pretty sweet. But yeah, Untouchable slightly changed as well and needs to be careful because Misha is always waiting for the sun. Come on Tracer, show the Uncle Doctor where the big bad bear touched you. So far it didn't happen but Misha is lurking in the shadows as usual. Yeah, talking about lurking, here comes the right walk actually as they're trying to reduce the damage output once again. The fight is being forced and well not so much, can't really do too much here. Trying to get the entire kill set up. But they can't land a combo yet. 13 versus 13 talents. Grant them an even fight. Dino with the 22 that he wants to turn in now. He's definitely one of the more squishy ones. Both of them are fighting for the next turn in. 43 against 36 turned in thus far. 14 stacks for Muradin. Trace at the bottom of the map. Starting to go deal with the Siege Giants. Over here on the other hand. It's the play for Deckard Kane. And the old man gets taken down by Team Lauba. Yeah, uh, he was always in a high risk group here and ge he gets eliminated quickly. He's not the only one, by the way. Garrosh is also taken down and Dainu. Oh, zip baby! Yeah, gets away. Gets the Siege Giants and is able to run out, but that could have become pretty tricky for them. It was good timing, though. Up towards the top. Nick playing it out against Ruzzo, but in the long run, he's most likely not going to be able to hold a candle to Sylvanas, especially since the Rega rotation is now also moving in. They gotta give it to Team Lauba. They're coming back into this, aren't they? They took a massive beating in the earlier stages of the game. But now they're starting to look better and better and better over here. Still behind in kills, but the momentum on the map is definitely theirs. That's a fort that's gone, and this is where Sylvanas comes into play again. Yeah, girl is looking strong here. She's doing a lot of work with all of that. Sylvanas is coming in, just saying like, Alright boys, let's just disable all this shit and take it down. Quick destruction there, and Leo is there too, and those gems, if they can actually hold on to those, that would be problematic to say the least. Masquerade on the other hand, he moves in, the fearless leader at the front, locks that in. Damage output, 30,000 for Greymane, 43k for Tracer, easily. Again the setup, but look at Sylvanas jumping in and taking the kill. Rutsu might have gone a little bit too deep though. Gets taken down as Tracer moves in, but she gets touched and is down just as Lauba picks up his quest reward. 
Six kills against seven, and all of a sudden we have a lead for Team Lauber. And they're moving up towards the top to take down the boss as well. Two of the four. Actually, one fort is eliminated. Eliminated one fort. Are you serious? You want to fight this one? Like, boys, I don't really know about that. Oh, Leo. Wow, Nick might actually survive this. <laughs> oh, come on, Lauber. Really? Oh, misses the storm ball, gets locked down, and the dwarf is dead. The boss is taken, though. It was a tactical Sudoku moment here from Lauba. He sat down in the middle of the lane and solved a bit of a math puzzle just to distract the opponent. And that worked well for them. <laughs> they got the boss. <laughs> but yeah, that kill shouldn't really have happened there, should it now? Uh, Tracer with the Ricochet on level 16. Uh, talking uh, about damage. Okay, Indomitable used by Garrosh as he moves away. But again, this fort is going to fall. Ford is down. Ford is eliminated. Can't really do anything about this one. Over to the right side of the map. That's where we got once again the bruisers moving in. And yeah, there we go. Take the bruiser camp. Play around that. Okay, down to the bottom of the map. That's currently where the rest of the team is trying to push the lanes out. This time the blue team is hoping for the momentum, as we've already established. In the middle of the map, though, just as we have that rotation, it seems like the fight is breaking out again with the Mercenary cam taken. Stay a while and listen. <laughs> and Tomb is in two. So it's the uh, Diablo duo that we have over there. Leo and Deckard. Who would have thought that they actually fight side by side one day? Not me, for sure. Problem is the web weavers at the bottom of the map. I mean, they nicely defended the ones in the middle, but at the bottom of the map, that one could still do some damage. Two forts down on uh, the blue team side, but this is a spicy game, guys. I mean, we're 14 minutes in, and I have zero idea who's going to take this one. Momentum is swinging the entire time. Right now, it seems like Team Nick might just be able to establish a bit of a lead for themselves, at least in structures, as they take this one down. But just a few kills and a bit of a lockdown could change things quickly. There's the Storm Bolt. Meridian jumps out. 23 stacks now. Has gone into his level 16 Dwarf launch. And... Yeah, faint death for Rexa. Camps attacked again. Damage output. Look at Tracer. 56,000. Dainu crushing it on this one. Bullet is out. Nick makes it out though. Yeah, nicely done. Nick is jumping away from this. Not a big problem for him. Once again, Red Web Weaver is descending now as well. Red team with another Web Weaver wave. And Sylvanas is pushing this out at the bottom of the map, as she should. So making sure that those Siege Giants can't take the Web Weavers out too quickly. That's already important. But yeah, it's a cool game. I mean, again, this is actually just starting us up, not only into the series, but also into Meta Madness. So I'm pretty happy with that. Muradin with the Zoning Stumble again. Yeah, the IQ 200 plays that we obviously see over here from him. I mean, it's better than the alternative, right? We all know that you can't miss a storm ball that you don't throw. But Lauba is not afraid to actually move out and try and drop a few of those. Has more than one Nomi moment at this point, but again, 24 stacks in total. Has his quest completed, that's good. So cooldown reduction now on the order attacks, and in addition to that gets the Pierce. What else do you want? I guess they want level 20. And they're close. Web Beavers, most of them are defended already. Leo's busy up at the top. Down at the bottom of the map. Ooh, careful. Masquerade. No, he goes down. Sylvanas gets the kill. And that's the 20. Now they got the rewind on Muradin. They got the gladiators washout. And they go full on aggression. <laughs> Junkrat is dead within half a second. Lauba is on the run and he actually makes it out. As they're just disabling structures all over the place. The only thing that they can trap here is Misha. An unbearable situation for Rexa as he sees his companion taken out. But it was impossible to actually save the bear. With that, they might even make the play for the core and it looks like that's exactly what we're going to see if not the core then at least keep number two i'd say actually locked down over here <laughs> yeah feign death baby <laughs> three against five and they're actually falling back they're like yeah maybe not on the other hand if they can get the kill that changes things very much so and indeed it does the kill is in tracer with a bit more damage 
9 kills against 9, 20 versus 20, 82,000 damage by Tracide, Dino, calm down dude, what the hell. Seriously, Dino is the guy in Over the Edge that you give an energy drink and he just goes absolutely bonkers and everything slows down in time. What was it? Helmy, Hermy? I don't know what that character was called anymore, but holy hell. <laughs> he needs to really calm down there. Oh my god. Alrighty, so topside. Another boss is on the menu and with two heroes down and one of them to support. Who can blame them here? Here's the attack. Three stacks on the untouchable now as well. What a setup. Now ah, one keep down and I guess this could actually secure the second one. Uh, let's go. Okay. If the blue team wants to really make this happen, they need to buy Dainu a bigger backpack. Because he is trying to carry hard right now, but it does not really seem like everybody fits into that thing. He might have a chance here. Has his 20 right now. Has to get stuffed. But yeah, boy is popping off already. Needs the damage output here. Let's see if he can actually get it. So everybody is starting to slowly jump in. Yep, there we go. Muradin. Ah, not yet, not yet, not yet. Take out Kane again. Boring everybody to death as he is setting the sleep up. Oh no! That was unfortunate. The buried alive and Junkrat is booping them out of it. That kinda hurts. Dino again with the damage output over here. 94,000 for him now. They're still trying to defend. Needs to get that damage in. There comes the attack though. The core is already getting. Murder tier, good slow as the death wave actually connects, but the shields are gone, the core is losing HP, and ladies and gentlemen, this looks very much like we're gonna have game number one and in favor of Team Lauber. Rayman is dead on the other hand, can they hold this? There's a second, 10%, and this is game. Team Lauber with the lead against Team Nikki at Meta Madness Group Stage, Group A. Game number two. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's check it out. Who is gonna take this one? Every single hero that was played on map number one is not allowed to be played again. So that is gonna limit the options by quite a bit. We have six heroes that are globally banned for the group stage. Again, I know I'm repeating myself, but I want to make clear to everybody that once that we're ent entering the actual tournament, there will very likely be more heroes globally banned, up to 10 in total. But that means that at least for the group stage right now, for map number two in this series, it's 16 heroes that are already banned. With the six bands that are now coming in, we'll have 22 banned heroes as the game begins. So, uh, something to definitely keep in mind here. ETC gets banned out. Kerrigan gets also banned again against Nick. Which makes a whole lot of sense. Again, he is pretty brutal on this one. But let's have a little bit of a look. What's happening with this one right now? Hello, Bunny's boys. Again, three, three map wins. <laughs> People are already kidding and saying like just just wait it wait it, wait it out. They're gonna win the group stage. They're gonna win every single game that they play, and then once that we're actually heading into the tournament, they're gonna lose everything again. Which I gotta admit could definitely happen here, given the past performance. Uh, but yeah, it's obviously more a meme than anything else. But still, okay. So Jimmy gets banned out, and what is the final ban for Team Lauber now? Well, not the final, but like in the first round, of, obviously, as we're heading into our pick phase. To be absolutely honest, I just want a third map, a three map at this point. Lucio gets banned. All right, the support plays are there. Yeah, Infernal Shrines is the map. But it already starts to become a little bit spicy now that we have the first map over and the first 10 heroes not being able to play them again. Tacita, very, very quick pick. First pick, even. Trusters. Buffed in the recent patch. Again, we had a big patch coming in. Blizzard talked a bit how they felt that Tassadar underperformed after the rework, so they buffed him. And he has already played a role in uh, one of the previous games. Which he, by the way, lost. <laughs> Just saying. But it was a Tassadar and Mephisto setup that we saw. 
Zaratul and Malfurion. Ty gets his Zaratul again. It's a bit reminiscent of the series that they planned against Team X-Ray earlier. That's the same map. And Zaratul played by Ty again on that same map. So uh, uh, let's have a bit of a look of how the blue team reacts. Because I gotta say, in the first game, it was actually a really strong performance by Team Nick in the early game. And they nearly took them down there. But then uh, Lauber and his boys turned it around. In this case, though, White Mane makes it in as a support. Okay. And we got a Masquerade on Blaze. Uh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Honestly, those new rules are kind of cool. Even with Meta Matters in the past, where you just like, you know, you banned completely for the entire series, not only for a map, was kind of sweet. But now that you all of a sudden can only play Hero once, it very, very quickly starts to push people out of their comfort zone. And I actually think that's kind of funny to see. So... If it comes to map 3, that alone would already be fantastic. Now my F gets banned in uh, the ban phase, which brings us to Malthel. Him being eliminated now too. Double pick, therefore, for Team Lauber. They are in the lead. They want to get another 2-0 here. And what are we going to get in terms of damage? I mean, again, technically speaking, you could, for example, also play a mage. There's still plenty. If Ty wouldn't have picked Zeratul, I would have said Ophia might be a hero that he is at some point going to pick here. Maybe even Kelsas, but now that he has Zeratul, he's of course going to play that one out. There's Vala for Rutsu. We still have Malganas from Lauba, similar to what we've seen previously. Outside of the Vala pick, I gotta admit. And off we go. Still waiting for the hero for Dino, obviously. Can't play Trace again. He's already played once, so out of this series. Not an option anymore. And in we go. Come on. Well, Diablo and Sonia. Okay. Very, very melee heavy. Oh boy. Blaze, Diablo, Sonia. And Tassada has now been elevated to the only range damage dealer. Okay. What else? Last pick. Swam Grotta, ladies and gentlemen. Let's check it out. What are we going to see for, uh, for our boy here? What is Swamp Brother going to get? Can't play the Junkrat. Alarak is open. They need something at the front line. Alarak has been also changed a little bit. So Thrall instead. Okay. Thrall is picked. Team Lauber in the lead against Team Nick. Let's see if they can make it 2-0. Or if Team Nick fights back with a bit of that famed German efficiency. Let's jump straight into Inferno Shrines. Game on. Game number two, Team Nick against Team Lauba. And off we go on the left side. Dainu playing Blaze, Nick on Sonia, Masquerade on Diablo. We got Kelvin on Tassada and Yazu on White Mane. On the right side of the map, Team Lauba with Lauba himself on Malganus, Ty on Zaratul, Death Knight on Malfurion. We got Rutsu on Vala and Svamgrotta. With a trolling thunder on level one is playing Thrall. Yeah, all jokes aside, I mean, definitely one of the heroes these days, you know, that is actually kind of strong on this level one. Has three talents that you can play depending on what exactly is going on there. And what exactly is going on, I mean, what kind of map you play, what kind of setup you play. Are you part of the four man? Are you on a solo lane? And this one in particular can actually be quite strong right now. It is oftentimes picked more so often than uh, Trash Lightning, which is still on certain maps an option for the extra damage output, but more so a Brawl talent, obviously, where it just reigns supreme. But it's going to be pretty cool to see how much Tassada can actually do here. Again, in the last patch that just dropped two days ago, he was buffed a bit. Just in general, not only the damage output, but Blizzard actually worked a lot on him in terms of like hit point pool, hit point regeneration, just survivability in general, and also the damage output here. One of the reasons why Team Nick actually said, okay, this is the only range damage that we actually need. And there's utility that comes with that force wall, of course, too, that you can use to make it even harder for the opponent to set a proper fight up outside of the stunts that they're already running with this in the first place. There's a lot of... There's a lot of layers to this, is pretty much what I'm trying to say here. But okay, as we go in, we have on level 1 for white main, pity the frail. We always do. That's why we feel so sorry for Anduin, because he is extremely frail. And yeah, Lauber, as he's already moving over, 
Just like, again, Omar Ganis, you're not going to really have a chance of picking him down this quickly, so it's not going to be all that easy. But yeah, they're just going to sit tight here, and he's going to sniff that out as much as he can, trying to move in. Usually you have an easy chance away to walk away with Malganus there. So yeah, not really a problem for him. Just like getting some information and making sure that his own team doesn't get attacked while they're trying to go for the mercenary camp. And there's another one attacked now at the bottom of the map too as they're going in for this one. With the rest of the team, Dino's currently sitting tight. Some Goda is here. There's a level 4 talents coming in, which means at this point, of course, that punishment is going to come into play. So we're going to see that traditional multi-shot build that we see in pretty much most Vala games. So that's coming in again. Bit of a skirmish at the bottom of the map. White main by now with the martyrdom on level 4. Mm, top side, still the place in Svogoda. He needs to be a bit careful. You could already see that there was that setup with Dainu and also Nick as they both try to take him down here. But no kills in the early game just yet. We have currently not a single kill on the board. Both teams are focusing instead on their shaman camps, which they should. I mean, first objective spawns bot side. So that means that you have a lot of space up at the top. There's no global that's being run here. So it's not like someone can take that shaman camp down and then simply rotate down to the bottom. I mean, theoretically they can, but they also then are going to lose some time on the shrine. The Alpha Wolf for level 4 for Thrall. This is going to play around that. Uh, same setup. Here comes the attack right away. All right. Let's get this one going. Let's see what they can actually pull off with this. Who takes the first one? Top side, still the one versus one. Thrall against Blaze. Down here, four versus four. Four Thrall in. Lauba. No. Oh, what? Oh. oh. <laughs> Finally, he's down. Oh my god. Like, that looked for a second like he might actually escape it. But nope, that four Thrall setup was just a bit too much for him to handle. And there was good follow-up, of course, after it too. That leads to an earlier level seven. Team Nick in the early game. Again, doing well here. They're doing fairly well. I like it. It's actually pretty good. Okay, so with this, we have now the multi-shot build set up. And here comes the Arcane Punisher. Off we go. A little bit of a skirmish in the middle still. Ty obviously looking for the damage. He's going to try and zip around the entire time. Not only with the wormhole, but also with the Shadow Hunter on level 1 as he completes that. Or oh, is heading to do that. Down to the bottom of the map still. The attack with the objective itself, taking the wall down. It's pretty much the only thing they can realistically hope for. And that's exactly what they're going to do here. And off we go. Okay, so good start. Good start for Team Nick. That's actually exactly what they needed to do here. So uh, nicely done by them. And what else are we going to get? Yazo is sitting over here. 7 versus 7. A little bit of an experience advantage for Team Nick. But nothing too crazy yet. Nothing too fancy. I kind of like it. It's a little bit of a slower game that we have in terms of the fights just yet. Only the initial kill against Malganus, but still, it's there. And top side too. Honestly, just seeing like a few of these heroes that we now have already in game number two just makes me really happy. This is going to be an insanely awesome tournament, and just having this a bit of a warm-up is already a blast. And I come back to uh, the point that I actually made in one of the earlier series, guys. Make sure that you also check out Hightech. You can support this event and possible future events by simply checking out the Hightech link that is in the YouTube description, also on Twitch, of course, depending on where you watch this right now. So have a look over there. Again, they track where the links come from. If they see that they come from the sponsoring of the tournament, that will make it a bit easier to try and get a sponsor for future events. It's super awesome working together with them. They're very easy going, leave a lot of the decisions here up to me. And thanks to them, we have a 2,000 euro prize pool for this event. And yeah, take 30 seconds of your time, check out their shop. The high tech link is ready in the description and you can have a look there. And it really helps and goes a long way to help future events like this to continue. Thrall gets taken down and that's also his stacks lost as we had that skirmish at the bottom of the map, nearly forcing another hero down. But White Mint, for example, already jumping back. Zeratul now also with a level 10, which gives us the might of the Nerezim. Tassada is still playing around. Good wall stun and a bit of extra damage in against Lauber. Quest on uh, Tassada is by now at 85 stacks. And let's see. Mid side, that's where currently everybody is already jumping out. Let's see. I push a lane out. 
Again, it's, it's early skirmishes. There's nothing really that forces, but of course those two kills that come in now slowly but steadily are giving a bit of an advantage to Team Nick. The level 10 abilities are ready for both. We have, as usual, when you're not forced into something else, we have Strafe, but holy shit, what just happened? Oh. <laughs> Combustion is in! Alright, Combustion is in has just now been picked. Um, yeah. So, there's that. Um, no bunker in this game. This is gonna be spicy. We have a combustion play for them. That's a lot of AoE. Could go for a bit of a combo attempt, I suppose, here. But, yeah. Let's see how that works out. A little bit skeptical right now. Dainu, on the other hand, I mean, again, he wants to be active, right? He wants to be aggressive. It's a re there's a reason why he's usually playing like Zaratul and Tracer. But we are embracing the memes, apparently, at this point. So, <laughs> Dino is trying to make a little bit more of the extravagant plays here. Zero stacks, by the way, on the Alpha Wolf after Thrall got eliminated topside. Now, at that moment in time, he didn't really have too much. So don't get me wrong. It's not like he was nearly fully stacked and then fell. But, yeah, down here. It's, it, honestly, it seems to me like we're going to have the blue team, Team Nick, walk away with another objective since nobody on the red team side is making a serious effort to stop this. Another 13 is also so close for them. They apparently don't really want to make a play here right now. But, well, let's see. Yeah, he's going wild a little bit quicker than I expected with the combustion. I mean, again, the, the reason of this tournament is to push people out of their comfort zone a little bit and force them to draft heroes that we normally don't get to see a whole lot. But that game number two would already yield a combustion pick is something that I didn't really expect here. With other combos, maybe, but okay. I'm game. Let's see what he can actually pull off with that. First of all, we have 13 talents in. That's a huge change for them now. Here comes the attack, and the kill against Malganis. Uh, combustion didn't really do a whole lot there, but I can tell you what did. That's the combo with the wall, and then Sonya coming in for the kill. Now, at least a bit of a slow was supplied by Blaze, and that helped. Down goes the fort, and that's also two kills. That's four kills to zero. Team Nick. Uh, game number two is looking, uh, again, very good for them here at the start. But I always come back to the point, they look great on map number one as well. And it seemed like they couldn't be stopped. And then into the mid and late game, we all of a sudden had the opponent just totally turn this around. So you gotta be a little bit weary at this point and uh, just like wait it out and see what happens. Because Lauba and his team, they have definitely proven that they have what it takes to bring this back. And we'll see if that's what happens. But for now... It's the Team Nick show. They're making the plays. They take the initiative. They are the ones initiating here. Kelvin needs to be a bit careful too. Uh, he's trying to get some additional damage out. and gets his stacks together. He's sitting at 120. And also in addition to that, as you can see, the damage output for him, 17,000. Top damage on his team. Which doesn't really come as a surprise. He's the only real range damage. So that has to be taken into consideration here. Combustion. Yeah, but Svamkorda already countered with his, his Earthquake there. Bala is the one that rocks most of the damage, but Thrall himself is also looking pretty good. Has 19,000 damage too, so he's easily matching what Bala has. The problem is really that now as we're getting more and more into this game, it really seems that the level 16 talent is going to come in before, or just as the shrine is going to spawn. And that's problematic for Team Lauba. If they fall into this trap where you're always down a talent and you can really bridge that gap, then you have, in the long run, a huge problem on your hands. And that might just happen here. It's an entire level they need for the next shrine. Ooh, and that could be a kill. Ty, oh, oh, run, baby, run. They know exactly where it is, and what a combo by Masquerade again. He is such a freaking monster on, on Diablo. And he comes in with a kill. Nicely set up here with the Epoch going for the priest stun. Incredibly well played by him. And that was pretty solid. So, yeah, well played. Very well played, actually. So, that's a kill. That's level 16. And that's momentum on the map. And that can easily get translated now. In them getting a little bit more damage in against the structures. Taking a fort down goes a long way here. And they're not only pressuring the fort at the bottom of the map. They're actually doing the same thing topside. Where Dino has now taken down the fountain. That's actually big. And he wants to kill too, together with Sonya, but doesn't quite work that way. 
The new aggro on the forts is still making it very difficult to dive a hero under forts and then uh, take him down there, so there's that. It's also become a little bit more difficult for Diablo though to make the big boy plays, um, or at least that's what we should see, for a very, very simple reason actually. Vala by now has Manticore and we have the Alpha Wolf. Now granted, the level 4 talent isn't stacked yet for Thrall, but I guess it's only going to be a matter of time until that happens. Either way, with those two 16 talents, Diablo can be heavily targeted now by the blue team. Especially once we have level 20 in, Diablo is going to suffer a lot. Vala should be able to stack a lot of damage if Rutsu is able to keep himself into auto attack range. And this is dangerous for, uh, for Dibbles. So Masquerade, he already made some really cool engages happen, but he needs to be careful that he doesn't get taken down too quickly here. So, there we go. The setup and Svamkarotta is barely alive. Makes it out. Oh my god, what a setup again. Total carnage and chaos as Lauba is trying to move out, but in comes Masquerade again with a wall stun. And he drops him quickly, waits it out until he has the angle, and then takes him apart. Six kills against zero. Nicely done. Very nicely done, actually. Camp is taken immediately as a little bit of a consolation prize. But, yep, well played right now. Really good setup for them. For the blue team in particular. Red team is, of course, trying to mitigate the damage, stop the bleeding a little bit. Then, in and of itself, is already going to be difficult enough. Can you tell you that much? I'm down here. Zaratul is moving in. Blaze is moving away. Top side is where the real action happens, though. That, that fort is a gone. I mean, this is really... Uh, it's one of those situations where you know already as it starts that the fort is down. But there's a good damage set up against Masquerade. He's able to jump out. But it illustrates what I've been talking about earlier. That it's going to be harder and harder for him to really keep himself alive here. Because of those 16 talents that came in for Vala and for uh, Thrall. And uh, there's obviously more to it, right? You have on top of that also Zeratul coming in. Blind is a bat, by the way, for Nalganis. 160 stacks now for uh, Tassada. Four stacks for the Alpha Wolf. So that's a cooldown reduction setup that they can uh, soon get. Move down to the bottom to eliminate the last fort standing. And they are going to get this one. Uh, Ford is down. That's all three eliminated. Really well done by them. And a damage output here. Vala, as you can see, 34,000 for her. This is going to spike heavily as she gets more and more auto attacks in. Especially if she gets to far flight quiver, which will allow her on 20 to stay even farther away from Masquerade so she doesn't have to expose herself to any damage. But Tassada also with really good damage. I mean, he's sitting at 30,000 right now. And let's not forget. As much as the red team is now starting to pick up a little bit of momentum in terms of talents that they have and that really scale well into the late game, they haven't gotten a kill yet. <laughs> They're still sitting at zero. So, yeah. There's a lot of we can talk about when we're talking about their team setup and their talents, their builds, what they can do with this. But let's not forget that they haven't gotten a kill yet. Tie down here as Nick is riding the snowflake. He definitely... I mean, the Golden Snowflake... Guys, when, when was the last time you saw Yellow Snow? You're literally riding on frozen pee, my friend. I don't really know, but that, that doesn't really sound too appetizing to me. Masquerade? <laughs> yeah! White may keeping him alive! Ah, but he dies! The soul stacks are gone, and that's exactly the setup that we talked about. 20 in the hands of Team Nick, but they're on the run! Rutsu nearly gets the kill against Tassada. He's not quite able to do that, but they isolate White Main and take her down too. Six kills against two, finally two kills for Team Lauba. And I am once more reminded of game number one, where the early game belonged to the blue team, and then Team Lauba turned it slowly around. Now they are about to head into their own level 20, and as I said before, this is going to make things a bit more difficult. Because of those safety talents, especially the one on Vala, but I mean, she's not the only one. I was actually kind of lucky for uh, Team Nick that Tassada didn't fall there either. He should have died. I mean, you know it, I know it, everybody knows it. But it was the rest of the team that zoned out Vala and just said, okay, you can get that kill, but if you do, we'll be there and we'll punish you. But as we have the 20, there it is, Far Cry Curve's in, and the Earth and Shields as well. For Thrall, so those team fights around the shrines are now gonna become a lot closer. Unless Ty ints. That is, of course, a possibility, but is able to make it out. 
Yeah, that would have been spicy though. Didn't even have to go into this 20 here. Okay. Camp is taken away. Top side. They might even be able to get some damage under the fort, but no. Shrine is announced at the bottom of the map, so the rotation has to be made, and that's where they're headed. And six kills to two. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Diablo is gonna have trouble. The problem for Masquerade is also that he's now at 15 stacks, right? Him dying just a few seconds ago means that his hit point pool is now reduced. So, yeah, that's gonna be an issue, and that's gonna be a problem too! Down goes Tacita! Yeah, that is, again, a shift in momentum in this game that we more or less expected. They're trying to make the play for Dino, and yeah, some serious damage here. I think we can probably see that in a spike on the damage I put on Vala. Oh yes, baby, look at this. 47,000 all of a sudden. She climbed heavily in damage. Zero deaths on her too. Yeah, this game is starting to swing in momentum, and Team Nick is starting to have a problem. And you know why? Because they didn't pick Bunker! Nah, it's not the only reason. <laughs> but Bunker would have maybe helped in a few of these situations. Okay, there's the APOC, the stun set up. Ah, but Zeratul gets saved this time. Question is more so, can Masquerade get saved? Because there's Vala. If he gets locked down, he's in trouble. But White Mane comes immediately in, tries to get the cleanse out. Okay, 6 to 3 in kills. Bot lane, heavy pressure here. Oh boy. Might lose a few structures on this one. With Thrall, by the way, dying again? Or oh, actually, he didn't die. I think he missed one of the wolves. He's back to zero. Yep. So he's actually in a pretty awkward position right now. Mm, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, he's, he's in a really weird spot. He might not complete that talent after all. I honestly thought that in the last team fight he would be able to lock it in quickly, but Strum Grotta has now reset it on the level 4 quest talent. He still has some synergy with the level 16. But yeah. So there's the problem. Okay. Another camp taken down at the bottom. This one is led up for now. Not even pushing in with this. They need to take some structures down. As much as we're talking about Team Lauba starting a bit of a comeback, let's not forget that they still have to take structures down. They've lost every single fort they had, and they've lost even the wall at the top on the keep, so they need to turn this around if they want to have a chance in the long run, because as ga the game continues, the catapults that are spawning for Team Nick are getting more and more powerful, and eventually this is going to take you down pretty easily. Well, choo-choo! Mid lane, another fort about to be eliminated, so yeah, there we go. Take the bottom, take the middle, rotate top side, fort there is already nearly down, so they take all of three of them. That's exactly what they needed to do. And they did it, I mean, they are in, they have taken the fort, they are now in a good position where at least there's catapult pressure on both sides, nobody has taken a keep yet in this game. And it's all about just simply waiting for the next objective. It's pretty much the goal, objective, and then hope that you can snowball it hard enough for that. Because we are also entering Winion territory. If you're crossing over the 20 minute mark, I mean, again, those catapults are starting to really hurt. And if you have a wave building up on one lane, that is starting to do a lot of work there. And this is really where you can, for example, move Zaratul into position, clear a wave real quickly, and then move into the actual team fight. So there's a lot that you can do with that. And we've all seen games end as the, the Winions, the Catapults, just take down not only shields but core. And obliterate uh, an opponent's main structure. And that's always a concern here. Yeah, but starting to move towards the top camp again. Six to three. Okay. <laughs> Damage output, 56,000, 36,000 for Tessida. Do we see that fight finally? Dino coming in. Are they committing? Yes, they do. And they get the kill against Lauber. He just gets bullied around and can't move his hero anymore. So much CC and Malfurion suffers the same fate. That double kill as Team Nick says, boys, we're not done yet. You might have gotten a couple of talents to help you out there, but this game is far from over. They go for some Grotta to take him down. Nick should be able to take him apart eventually. Ah, the wolf connects though. And the ancestral healing comes in, but that should still be a kill. Yep, and he gets eliminated. Loses the, a few stacks that he just built up again. Not a big loss again. Didn't have too many. But that's three heroes down. The only question that remains is what can Team Nick do with it? 
Shrine hasn't been announced yet, so it's not like they can get themselves a lead here. There's a camp on the map, but it seems like they're trying to go through the bottom of the map and open the wall up, escorting the next minion wave through. There is definitely a chance for that. Okay. Let's go. Let's have it. Here we have it. Keep goes down. They're taking it. Nicely done. Okay. First keep is down. Up towards the top. That's where we still have some pressure. Uh, someone should react to that. That catapult is eventually going to break through that wall. I don't know that... I honestly don't think that the keep is going to fall. But... With the mercenary camp? I mean, you want to be a little bit careful here. The shrine is being announced though. So you can't really move back. This is going to be a problem eventually. Guys, this could actually equalize the position on structures on the map here. Catapult is in, and as you can tell, this is starting to hurt them a lot. Uh, is the catapult on the core? Kinda is. So that's gonna hurt. But as it stands, top side, that's where we all of a sudden see that fight breaking out over the next Punisher. We're 23 minutes into this game. Zoning them out. Keep top side has now fallen down to 50% HP. And off we go. Archon being committed to 45,000, 62,000. The damage output is definitely there. Apoc again. They're going in. And there comes the combustion with the value and the kill against Thrall. Top keep has been eliminated. But still, we see Team Lauba falling apart here with Malfurion and Thrall both eliminated. They're going straight up for Vala to try and take her down. The wall of Kelvin actually securing her life. But this is a huge problem. Alrighty, uh, Kelvin is moving in. Nick is sitting there too. The attempt apparently of Ty to make a play here. Yeah? They lost out on the Punisher already. 11 kills against 3 just shows how dominant Team Nick was throughout the entire game in the team fights at least. And off we go. Number two. Ah, 18 seconds. 18 seconds for Malfurion. 14 for Thrall. They're there. Let's go. Let's jump in and take them out. Keep. Can they get it? Honestly, Keep is down. Core. Right now, the only question is do we get number three? Yes or no? Is the defense possible? It looks nearly. And I don't think they can, right? 50%. Even with the five man that they have. Blaze is down, but so is the core. It's too late. Nah, 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 nah. This is game, and we go to game number three, ladies and gentlemen, in this best of three series at Meta Madness. Game number three. Okay, now it's getting juicy. All right, I'm first of all happy that we are in game number three in the first place because the games are, going, are really good so far. At the same time now, though, this is the first time that we head into a third game with this particular rule set right now. And it should be pretty awesome. Let's be honest. It should be pretty cool because now we have seen two games, which means that 20 heroes were played. All of those 20 heroes are not eligible for picking anymore and in addition to that we have those six global bands that come in too so that makes it 26 hero so <laughs> and another six are getting banned now which means 32 heroes are banned as we're heading into this this is gonna get wild now we are really getting to uh, the spicy stuff and again this is only best of three series Saturday, Sunday, that's best of five. So we could go into, even into the fifth map. So let's have a bit of a look here. Carrigan gets banned again. I think that's going to be a fairly regular occurrence against Nick. Especially as the hero pool gets a little bit lower. But yeah, what else? <laughs> ah, I was a little bit worried that we would get too many two zeros today as we are heading into that little group stage of ours to get the seeding going and decide which teams will start in the winner bracket and which will start in the loser bracket. A Nubarak gets banned. When was the last time you saw a Nubarak ban uh, on a higher level play? Mm, okay. 
I mean, it's game three, you know, there's still stuff around. It's not like it's gonna, it's not like it's too insane. But there are also certain picks that are just not available anymore. When we talk about the tanks, there's not a lot. You got, at this point, I mean, who do you have as a main tank? Arthurs? Stitches? Tyrael? And that's pretty much it? Then you go into, of course, like, still side lane tanks that you can also play in a main tank situation. So there's definitely still a few things around that could fit that bill, but it's definitely going to become uh, trickier now. <laughs> yeah, Urel is taken. She c could... Yeah, Urel and Tyrael, here we go. Honestly, if Lauber and his boys don't pick a tank now, they might actually run into trouble. Well... Not really, not real trouble yet, but they will be pushed into a certain direction. If Nick and his boys want to ban out a tank, they would very heavily dictate where Team Lauber has to go with it. So, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Zarya, that's already good. Okay, that's a good combo no matter what. And Imperius as the main tank. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Imperius main tank. There we go. What else do we have? Malthael banned out. Okay. Another side lane are getting eliminated here. <laughs> Imperious main tank. Hey, it's not too crazy yet. But again, just imagine a fourth map coming in, right? All of a sudden, even the heroes that you see here are not allowed anymore. Okay. And win for the heels. The lions, yeah. And Jaina. Okay. Dreadlord game. I mean, it's actually not too bad. <laughs> this is the moment where you go judgment, right? All of a sudden, instead of sanctification, they're uh, like, you know what? We're just going to go for a good old blow up comp. We're going to go judgment and we're going to go blizzard. And then it's like, poof, drop them quickly. I mean, theoretically, we could really see adjustments like that in the later stages, because once that you are forced into certain hero combinations, you might not stick to the meta in terms of your talents either. Brightwing and Ragnaros! Baby Rag is in the house, ladies and gentlemen! Towers of Doom, and we have some Ragnaros action over here for Ty. <laughs> oh, it's happening. It is all uh, already happening. Okay. And Phoenix. Phoenix has the last pick. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's go in. Game number three, Towers of Doom. Let's make it happen here at High Tech Meta Madness. Game number three. Let's make it happen. It's getting interesting already. And this is a best of three. Over to the left side. Nick on Urel. Dino on Phoenix. Kelvin on Jaina. Masquerade on Tyrael. And Yasu on Anduin. And on the right side of the map, on our third map in this best of three series, Lauba on Imperius as the main tank. Svamkarota on Reyna. Death Knight on Brightwing. Again, the hero got actually buffed a little bit. The developers were shocked that right wing is underperforming. Uh, Kappa. <laughs> buffed the hero slightly. Rutsunau and Zarya and Ragnaros is played by Ty. Now, Imperius has actually been changed a little bit as well. I mean, again, only the level 13 talent. So we have bit of additional functionality for a pathetic mortals, something that is very likely going to play a role here to make Imperius a little bit stronger. Outside of that though, it's kind of important to note that, well, the hero is still, even without that change, would have very likely been picked here, especially in the combo with Zarya. Can also speed him up, of course. It's going to be interesting to see what Phoenix is going to pull off together with the, the blue team set up here. Ragnaros, a pick that we don't really see all that often. Actually, a bit of a chase at the top. They're trying to go for Nick here. Ooh. Gotta be careful, the space got in trouble apparently. Dino 2 barely making it out, so yeah, that was a very aggressive setup from Team Lauber. But Ragnaros, another one of those heroes that was actually changed a little bit. Sulfura Smash saw a bit of a cooldown reduction. Mana cost reduction as well, and a damage increase. And the developers pretty much just said like that they, what they realized is that, especially in the competitive scene, was a nice joke, by the way, that reference. Like, I laughed. 
one eye laughing, the other one crying. But yeah, that apparently Lava Wave is too strong. <laughs> which, which tells you everything that you need to know about the state of the game right now in Storm League and everywhere else. So Sulfuras has had to be buffed. Uh, yeah, I can't, honestly I can't remember the last time that I saw a Lava Wave in an actual competitive game. I think that it must have been with Tim together in uh, HTC time still. Uh, yeah, of course. We don't really see Ragnaros a lot, but we've seen it, I think, once or twice this year, and always it was still for us. Now the talent get even buffed, so it's even stronger. But yeah, that doesn't necessarily make Ragnaros a top pick or anything, but it is still something where you can try and capitalize on the fact, now that we have so many heroes banned out, that Ragnaros has that one shot potential if someone else sets the kill up for you. Yeah, talking about Ragnaros and setting kills up, it seems like the first one that is being set up here is Ragnaros himself eliminated by Phoenix. Dino sitting now at the top. I try and do go for maybe for Ural. Nah, Space Goat is fine. Speed barriers in for Zarya, so can speed them up pretty quickly. Going to the bottom of the map now. Laubai, <laughs> look at this. Look at that man. Damn, that rhythm. Yeah. Laba just wants to dance, you know? He's a party animal. Okay. Uh, all right. Again, early skirmish. Alter's activating. This is where the real show begins. Who takes Alter number three? There's no North American team involved in this, so I don't think that we're going to see a 40-0. Nope. One of those teams is definitely going to channel at least one. Yeah, it's the fight at the bottom left. Then again, top right, as after top left has been taken, seems like they're still fighting over this. Yeah, Ty has to stick around since Dino is moving in. At the bottom of the map, three versus three. Are they going to try and make a 40-0 app? And what's going on over here? Uh, one to one, 36 to 40. Ooh, Brightwing going down up at the top. A little bit more action against Ragnaros, actually, as we're still fighting for the one at the bottom. Ragnaros is apparently still interrupted. Yep, committed to it. Committed to the trade just to hold this one for as long as possible. Urel therefore moving down to the bottom of the map, but Lauba goes down. Team Nick able to get the kill. And they might be able to get a second. Brightwing coming in and ruining the play, but another four shots are fired as Nick and his boys go for the third altar. Another kill against Ragnaros as Phoenix made his way over. And yeah, Dino is actually crushing this pretty quickly. So now we have four kills against one. And they got all three. Uh, team? Is this a 40 zeros moment? Uh, uh, is there a chance? Like, I'm not so sure, but it's getting there, right? We're at the bottom of the map. We still have a little bit of uh, fight in uh, the red team. Honestly, if they lose with a 40-0, I, <laughs> I would laugh pretty hard. If Lauba goes from 08 to uh, 40-0, that would be quite the transition. Normally, honestly, when it happens up at the top... Yeah, the counter kill. Okay, okay, okay. They're, they're showing some teeth, at least. Pick up the second kill. That's something already. But yeah. I mean, I, I gotta admit, if they make 40-0, or if they lose with a 40-0 then I will blame it on Brightwing. I have zero qualms about that. At all. I mean, that would be an immediate, like, yeah, it's Brightwing's fault. So... <laughs> yeah, make it happen. Make it happen. I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. I mean, anyway, that's a lot of pumpkins down here. Most of them actually already taken down, or at least, like, slow down, but three of them still connect, and BAM! That's 50% of the HP gone right away. Game number three. Ragnaros topside. Ty has really suffered here in the early stages. He died two times already. Both times taken down by Phoenix. Dino playing aggressive style against him. And the Dino versus Ty setup is something that we've seen already a lot. I mean, both of them play... They play similar heroes. Tracer, Zeratul in particular. That's what they're known for. So that's obviously, I would assume, a bit of a friendly rivalry here. But at this point, there's a clear winner. 16,000 damage. Only Jimmy has a bit more. Uh, there's a level 10 abilities. And the water elemental is in. Sulfura. Shocking, I know. And unfortunately, we are not seeing judgment. I would actually laugh so hard if eventually we're going to see judgment and really wild combos on talents coming in. Ragnaros again. With a molten core. 
baby rack is going for the interrupts. Dino a bit low. Everybody is just jumping out here, staying outside of the line. Lauber with a very ambitious channel. That one's not going to work, but he forces, of course, a reaction out of it. But there's level 10 abilities for them now. Okay, so the force is in. Can they get a couple of kills with that? That would be kind of nice. Over here, the attempt of Lauba to get a connect. Zone them out a bit. Maybe by just those few precious milliseconds that you need to get the channel completed. But, not happening. At this point, I think they're just like, okay, at least take one. At least take one, we'll take it from there. And there it is. 40-0 has officially been averted, everybody. You can breathe the sigh of relief. We're in Europe after all. 36 to 28. And Lauba still dead. Yes, Lauba down. Okay. It's Lauba eliminated. And can they go for Raggy again? Yeah, pretty much. Well, actually, they are starting to fall incredibly low too. So, yeah, they wait this one out. You gotta be careful there. I mean, there's always a chance for a counter aggression and then maybe running into a kill if your opponent turns it against you. So yeah, they're, they're playing it safe here. We got 5-2 to two now on the board when it comes to kills. A little bit more kill heavy than some of the previous games that we've seen here. Down to the bottom now, the uh, next push towards the bell tower. And I gotta say that Team Lauba has done tons of damage to that thing already. That's the second wave of pumpkins that they escort into the bell tower. So if they claim this one, bot lane control would be theirs early on in the game already. And they can really start to pressure the core and the points. So it's, a, it's actually a decent setup. But yeah, five kills to two. Top side, still our one versus one between Nick and Ty. And down here, they are aggressive. It's these Zarya setups, seriously. If you can go for a good four man with Zarya, she is just so incredibly impactful in any four man setup that she plays in that it's really difficult to hold a lane like this when you go up against her. She gives sustain, she gives damage, there's a lot of poke that she can also offer. And then you have the stun setups around Imperia, so it's really tricky for Team Nick to play around that now. But Masquerade gets saved, barely, and when... Oh, Sulfuras not connecting here. Yeah! Ho, 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 Dino with a warp out. Ah, careful, Grasshopper, that can backfire. Sanctification on the ground as they're trying to chase them off. Lauba in trouble, and he's dead. Lauba deaded. And they're looking for more. The Space Goat is screaming and jumping and isolating Ragnaros. And that should be a kill against Ty. Brightman comes in for the potential save. Has to jump out with the Blink heal. And instead we see Ragnaros as expected fall. The zoning is more or less complete. Five against three on the board. And that should actually be an easy channel for them. Uh, so they're starting to go in. The kill against Zarya. And they just can't stop the bleeding now, can they? Nope, they lose a little bit too much over here. So things are tricky as another four shots are fired against Lauber's score. 24 against 36. Keep in mind, Team Lauber, they were able to win the series against Team X-Ray earlier. So they are already staying kind of tight in that group. Stayed up in the middle. Damage output as we take another look at it. 37,000 by now. 34,000 for Jimmy. Yeah, and Ragnaros is in trouble. Ragnaros is really just doing too much over here. I mean, I knew if Tim was here, he would advocate for a Lava Wave moment, but that has already been shut down. And by the way, in case that you didn't know, Tim is likely going to join me for a game or two of Meta Madness towards the final day again. Looking forward to that and hope that it works out. We'll see. Good steal on the camp, by the way. And the bell tower at the bottom of the map has been converted. Brightwing is down, though. Despite the fact that he just got the bell tower, they're losing heroes again. Brightwing down. Trashwing eliminated. Ragnaros is also dead. And they take Imperius. Three heroes eliminated. That's 11 kills against two now. Damn. Yeah, on the kill count, these kids are crushing. 11 kills to two. And eventually, as the death timers increase, that should become a big issue for the red team but they still hold on to the bell tower down here for a little bit longer question is just for how long because team nick is just saying wait you have only two and we have sanctification up yeah i think we're going to retake this thank you very much we're going to get those kills but you gotta also play around those new bell tower mechanics those fort mechanics that's a lot of missing armor for nick but they survive as you can tell and the bell tower is going to be reclaimed they take control again over the bottom of the map have a full two level lead right now. 
which adds to all of this. And it's another two on the map. So, yep. You see them go straight for the channel. The one at the bottom isn't interrupted. The one over here is also zoned. So, Team Lauber is getting pummeled into the ground here. Level 16 talents. This is level 14. 16 versus 36. It's getting really rough. Yeah, this is getting massively problematic now for them. I am very curious to see how they are planning to come back into that. They need some solid late game control. Bell Tower control too, in order to bridge that gap. Which isn't impossible. And then Towers of Doom, definitely not a problem. Well, can be a problem, but it's something that you should usually be able to pull off at least a little bit. Okay, Masquerade goes down. And, well, that is looking tight so far. So far, so good. But the attack is coming in. Down at the bottom of the map, they might actually go for the bell tower again, if uh, given a little bit of time. The rest of the team is starting to move towards the top, though, for boss control. Wow, I actually saw the rotation on the minimap and wasn't quite sure what they were going to do with it. But that's going to be a weird trade, because you trade the bell tower for the boss. Now, generally speaking, you can, of course, make that play. But you kind of need to ensure that you take this back as quickly as you can. Four more shots fired. That's good. Now it's 16 versus 16 talents. 12 against 36, so that's literally a third. But with 16 talents now on the board for Team Lauber, they have the power to reclaim this. And with reclaim this, I, I mean like, well, not reclaim it, but like defend the bottom bell tower. If it's, if the blue team tries to reclaim it. So that might spice things up a little bit, because all of this happens around the, third, uh, the fifth altar phase, and that's the triple altar now. So that could become problematic. I mean, not gonna lie here. That could become a bit of an issue, guys. There's the channel over here. They're trying to interrupt that too. That should actually work out. All right, so far so good. Five shots fired versus three, and they channel this one. So I guess at the end of the day, we're talk. Yes, we're talking six versus five. Still a positive trade. Puts them down to six points on the core now. So 31 against six points. That's still single digits. That's actually much better than I expected here. If two of those bell towers would have ended up in the hands of the red team, that would have been a big victory for them and would have started to close the gap here quite significantly in bell tower damage. So not bad. And that spells, of course, trouble for the red team now. Despite the fact that they have the bell tower control, they're in the single digits. Now we've seen crazy comebacks. We've seen crazier comebacks than this even. But it is still something where you got to be careful because whew, you can easily lose this one here. Mm, let's see. I mean, that's just like sitting around trying to, of course, reclaim the bell tower. And on the other side, you see Team Lauber trying to prevent exactly that from happening. Any kind of other bell tower control would be nice, too. Matter of the fact is, it doesn't really matter if they take the bell tower or not. You still need two, right? Two altars or one altar and a boss in order to make it happen. So that's still a thing. The question is more so, can Team Lauba catch up? Because if they are able to use that bell tower to give themselves a continuous advantage on the altar channel, then they can bridge that gap quickly. But they're still a level behind and 10 kills behind. That worries me probably more than anything else. 46,000 damage. 50,000. Choo choo. Nick is coming in. They're trying to go for Lauba and he jumps out. A good combo here again, but not enough for a kill. Ooh, got close though for just a second. Okay, now they're reclaiming the bell tower. Yeah, this is gonna make things a little bit tricky now. Not so much, be again, it doesn't really change anything for, ooh, good stun. Doesn't really, ch oh, nearly, oh, the kill. Perfect timing, can they get the counter kill? No, it doesn't seem like it. Five versus four as we have the double alt on the map. I was just about to say, taking the bell tower at the bottom doesn't really change anything for how many objectives the blue team has to take but it changes everything for how quickly the red team in theory could make a comeback and close the gap so uh, as it seems more and more likely that team lauber is going to claim both of these altars thanks to the kill against anduin that's at least two points that weren't captured by them all right as the shots fired over here they can still claim this one level 20 is close uh, Nick is actually trying to force the hand here a little bit or interrupt this. If he can interrupt it until 20, that would have been the dream. Well, 
20 and Anduin, I suppose. Still not going to take the fight if you're in a 5 versus 4. So shots are fired. 23 against 6. Looks a lot better already. Again, not perfect by any means. But that is doable. It's very much so doable. Right, with the 20 talents in, if they can even get the bell tower at the bottom of the map, I mean... That would be insane. But not so... not so quickly. Andrin is coming in, Ragnaros isn't even here. So that's a 4 versus 4. 4 versus 5 now that Yasuo joins the fight. Yeah, if they can actually... Nah, if Nick would have been able to just like jump over Swam Goda once again and push him back into the rest of the team... That could have been a kill and then maybe even the beginning of the end here. Uh, okay. Next altar phase is a double, by the way. With a top left, top right double. So that means very much like we are realistically... I mean, it, with boss coming up too, it could be the end. There's a 20 now. Storm talents are available for both sides. And the weak spot acquired right here. They're moving into the fight and a kill against Jaina. Team Lauber, are they actually going to pull this one off? They, they take the kill. Dino is low. Ooh, but the counter kill against Reyna. Nicely done. Honestly, the Phoenix plays that we're currently seeing from Dino here, playing around the Unconquered Spirit now too. They were pretty solid. Boss is up. Double altar is up as well. You get two out of the three. And it's a victory for Team Nick. No bell tower advantage for either team right now. Oh, 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 masquerade. Careful, and he jumps out. Uh, gets zoned for just a second, but he has the mobility, so he has an easy time moving away from this one. No kills just yet. Four versus four on the map. <laughs> ah, it's a cool one. I like it. Okay. Going up to the top. Yeah, that's a space go. Jumping in. Channel versus a channel, as you can tell. Yep, four shots against four shots. 19 against two points on the core. And bosses up on the map. Yeah, it's getting problematic. Actually posturing around the boss. Honestly, for Team Lauber, this is going to be a huge thorn in their side. At some point, they might just make the play for the boss just to remove it as an objective of the map. If they can make that happen, that would be great. Yeah, they're thinking about it. They have vision. Okay, they see Tyrael at the bottom. Tyrael is visible, so they go for it. I guess Team Nick, at this point, kind of knows what's going on. They don't have the sanctification, so they don't want to take the fight. But that gives the opportunity to them. So the shots are fired. 16, 15 against 2. Down here, a little bit of damage against the bell tower. The rotation is in, so they're not really staying too long. Yeah. Ooh. That was unexpected. That sanctification, I'm not sure if that was really needed. He might have been a little bit too worried. I mean, the polymorph, don't get me wrong, with the follow-up on the stun, could have been his demise here. But that sanct is a problem. That's a huge cooldown to burn. And they are heavily dependent on the sanctification for the team fight, which is why the red team had absolutely zero hesitation rotating into the bell tower and taking it. That's a problem. Guys, they might, they might have just made a massive, massive miscalculation. Top side, the pumpkins are going to put pressure onto the bell tower, that's true. But there is a very good chance that those two are now going to be taken. If both of the bell towers end up in the hands of Team Lauber, it's five versus two points on the core. That's an issue. And let's not forget, there is a global in this game. Brightwing can... Act and yeah, there's another camp pushing at the bottom of the map. All of a sudden, this is definitely going to be a channel and then he can global in. It's 100% 5 points off the core. 5 points off, 10 versus... 10 versus... versus 2. And they have to fight... find both of them anyways. There's the setup. Lauba, Lauba down. Lauba down the 5 versus 5. They don't need the sanctification as it seems. 5 versus 4 now. The shots are fired. 7 against 2 points on the core as the pumpkins made it through. Can the red team somehow hold on to this? Lauba is down for another 48 seconds. Jaina, ice block! Oh, they can't get the kill. But they're close. But it seems like Rutsu is going to fall on Zarya. There's the sanctification. Zarya is down. Brightwing runs away. The submerge. It's not going to save Ragnaros. This is game, ladies and gentlemen. Team Nick, they made it happen. It got spicy towards the end here. But the result is going to be the same. The channel is happening. Five-man team wipe.
and the shots are fired as Team Nick secures the victory in Group A of Meta Madness against Team Lauber. GG. Well played.